seen um, Zach just have takeover moments like that. Fourth quarter, and he just seemed to really uh, step up, and every time Denver answered, he had his own answer. Yeah, I, I think there was a couple plays that, um, you know, he was uh, maybe a little disappointed in defensively or just offensively. I think there was some, some plays he felt like he could have handled a little bit differently, and I, I think that that's what he does. He almost becomes more focused and, and more determined. And, you know, he had a couple plays to drive down the lane for the dunk, um, you know, a couple of the threes. Um, you know, even the, the shot late in the fourth quarter, I thought he got fouled coming off of it just in front of our bench. But, I mean, he made some really remarkable plays and, and really, um, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, carried us making shots. And DeMar obviously helped us, you know, by getting to the free throw line. The jump shooting display by Zach was pretty absurd at times. What goes through your head as a coach when you're watching him kind of make something out of nothing and seeing him in a couple of I mean, for me, I mean, it's, it's remarkable to watch him, and I'm – very fortunate and blessed to watch a guy shoot the ball the way he does and the degree of difficulty. And, you know, he's, I think, one of the best tough shot makers in this league, and he's comfortable doing that. I, I think the biggest thing for him, what I was really pleased with for, from him today, was that everything he did was aggressive and it was a straight line. And it was very, very direct and it was very, very explosive. And, you know, even ones that he missed, you know, fine. But just his level of aggressiveness when he plays like that, because when he's coming off screens or he's playing downhill and he's playing, it's so hard to guard him because if you try to control the drive, he's obviously got the shooting. And if you get too far up on him, he's so explosive. And I thought today he had a really good balance of, you know, like not necessarily coming off screens and, and playing with the ball, but he just like he went. And when he does that, it, it puts a lot of pressure. And then I think he gets his passing in the game as well. And he had games like this last season, but this season to have another guy in DeMar you can count on to get another eight points from getting to the foul line as much as he did. How much of a luxury is that for you guys? You know, I think it's all the way around, you know. Um, you know, Zach last year just – being my first year, you know, he had a, he had to carry a, a, an enormous load, and you know, a lot of times, you know, coming down the stretch of games like that, you know, you know, maybe you can use a play out of a timeout, use him as a decoy. Maybe you do something, you know, but most of the possessions you're gonna have to find a way to incorporate him to get him to create. And I think to have a you know a Demar when Vooch gets back is healthy, you know, even Lonzo, who's another playmaker and handler, Alex. I you know I thought we. Generated some good shots against their zone. Um, you know, I thought there were some moments where obviously we got really stagnant, but we just didn't shoot the ball particularly well at all from three. And, you know, Zach, you know, carried us shooting the ball, but I thought we kind of stayed the course and stayed in the game and, you know, we got off to a good start to start the third. Unlike, you know, the Portland game, we came out of the locker room and I don't know what we had. I think we, we turned it over six times in the first six minutes of that of that third quarter, and I thought we handled the third quarter better tonight. Really, I was going to ask you about the third quarter. I mean, how important was that for you guys to get off the heel and run, but then for your best two players, Zach and DeMar, to have their fans press all over there? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they talked about it, you know, at halftime. You know, that, listen, you know, we've we got to come out and, you know, we've got to be aggressive and, you know, we've got to kind of set, set the tempo and the stage of the game. And I thought we did. You know, we, we started out on defense. We got to stop. We got out in transition a little bit. But the biggest thing was we got stops and we ran and we played downhill at the basket. And it was good to see us respond because once we got up by 10 or 12, you know, give them credit. They, I mean, they responded too. I mean, they cut it all the way down to three and it was back down to six and it went back up to eight and then it was back to 10 and it was back down to four. I mean, they, they kept fighting and both teams kind of answered each other's runs. But I thought it was important that we came out of the locker room a lot differently than we did in Portland because I thought that third quarter – you know, even though we had a four or five point lead at the at the end of the fourth, it was we just broke the momentum of the game, and we had we had opportunities where we were we were up I think fourteen points, and we got like three consecutive stops, and we turned the ball over three consecutive times, and they bang bang made two threes, you know now it's six points, and now all of a sudden it's down to eight, and then the game totally flipped, and um, you know we had some broken assignments defensively, you know tonight that we can take a look at. It was. I thought I thought it was hard for both teams because it, we were, both teams were so small and you're and, and you're trying to switch and it's hard when guys are turning down screens, manipulating screens, twisting screens, and we certainly had some real real blown coverages defensively on Barton and Capazzo going downhill, um, but we were able to kind of stay afloat by getting to the free throw line with Demar and then some of Zach's shot making. Derek looks like he's really taking advantage of the minutes he's getting in small ball. 
I think he's rolling to the basket, you know, real well and getting in the pocket, and then he's finding ways along the baseline to get his offensive rebounding. You know, he's really an, an elite, explosive athlete, and um, he's got a really, really good IQ, you know, in in that mid post area, in that pocket area. And I thought he was much, much more under control, you know, when he did catch it there tonight, where he kind of looked and gathered himself. There was a couple plays I know I mentioned before the game in Portland where. You know he didn't make 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 uh, you know, the necessary play, but I, I think between him getting on the baseline and him getting in the pocket and just his overall athleticism, I think that was uh, that was that was really big. The vertical threat that he brings, where like he's within ten, twelve feet of the basket, it feels like he can finish it. What kind of dynamic does that have to the offense? Because even Booch, obviously, is a tremendous offensive player, but doesn't really have that time and that athleticism above the rim. Tony, same thing. Like, what element does that have when you have a guy that? No, I mean he, he's he's um, I mean he's really explosive and listen, I, I I think when things happen like it happened with Vooch, you play five games on this swing, you find out the day before or that morning that you're going out to Golden State that he's not coming, and you find out something new about our team. You know, I really really liked the way Javante and. And, and Derek played together. And you know what, Derek, like I said, if Vooch is on this trip, probably never gets that opportunity. And maybe it's something now he's got some familiarity with playing five games, you know, not so much five, but four, that he can he can do a little bit more of that. They don't want to talk to me anymore. They, they, I, I'm t all I do is ask the questions about you, so come on in.